when we say uh, post MBBS or what next, you know, that's a question all of us dread when somebody asks us what next. Now that you've graduated from a medical school, now that you're a doctor, what next, isn't it? And traditionally, all of us plan to prepare for our postgraduate entrance examinations, be it here in India or in the country we graduated or for a foreign entrance examination. And we plan for a post-graduation, basically. And then we give the examinations and based on the ranking, then we choose a specialty and then we make a career out of it. Now, this is the usual scenario. Times have changed. We are in a very exciting uh, space when it comes to healthcare market today. Healthcare industry happens to be the fastest growing business market, financial market amongst all other industries today in the world across the globe. So we as clinicians uh, become a very, very um, intricate part of this growth phase as well. So there are many exciting opportunities that one gets to uh, take up now rather than probably a decade ago or so. So I wanted to talk about uh, a mix of these things to give you a brief understanding of what other interesting avenues that one can try out. So let's start with our traditional uh, thinking. It's mostly about getting into clinical practice, a clinical specialty. So let's talk about the road ahead in clinical practice and top clinical uh, areas in 2019. Simran, we just began. It's been just two minutes. Please keep posting in the chat box. I'd like to keep it as interactive as possible so that if you share your ideas as well, then we can have a discussion on that. So we all know about the postgraduate specialties that we have, the broad specialties that we have, be it here in India or in any med school across the globe. The common specialties and super specialties we are all aware of. I'm not going to talk about the traditional uh, clinical specialties which might top the list, but I'd like to talk about in a perspective from the specialties or departments which have gained importance in the last five years or a little more than that across the globe which can uh, become a good space uh, for fresh graduates to look into to venture into so i'm going to talk about just a glimpse of few specialties that have picked up pace really really well in the last few years so to start with um have you guys thought about emergency medicine er room or so to say our very old casualty our very old casualties are no longer casualties they've become eds emergency departments there is an emergency room in almost all the corporate hospitals today. Uh, most of the hospitals, it's the departments begin with emergency medicine because that's the first place where a patient is taken to uh, in an emergency scenario, even before any consultant sees them. This is the department every patient walks into in the middle of the night or in an emergency. Emergency medicine, mm, I wouldn't say it's a new specialty, but I would definitely would like to say and advocate the fact that it has gained momentum like never before in the last three, four years. The reason I say this is from the inputs both we have from our student database, which is about 90,000 students across the globe, the 66 to 100 hospital groups that we are uh, attached to in terms of training our students. So the inputs we've gathered from them and the data and requests we've seen from them have been around uh, the facts that I'm advocating. Emergency medicine has picked up really good space. They've got good career prospects. There are structured programs today, uh, postgraduate program in emergency medicine, that is either DNB or MD has come up uh, nine years ago, but there are a lot of other training programs that are available if one wants to become an emergency physician and there are good career prospects uh, in that industry as well. You can grow into the level of a consultant by doing a basic program and then probably a master's program. So I'm talking about both within the pg and segment, even other private, there are a lot of hospitals and training institutions which do their individual emergency programs as well. For example, Medvacity, we in accreditation with the Royal Liverpool Academy do a fellowship in emergency medicine as well. There are other programs by institutions like like CMC and other schools. So whichever the program it is, you can pick up a structured training program, finish your uh, basic training in emergency medicine, and then join an ER department, take up another examination or the next level of the course and grow into level of a consultant and run your own emergency department. So emergency department is one of the really, really good paid uh, departments also. So there are very good uh, career prospects in that domain. So emergency medicine, definitely watch out for. Um, the next in line to emergency medicine, probably I would like to bring focus is probably critical care. And um, the reason I say this is um, today we have our postgraduate specialty programs in critical care. 
Uh, there are uh, specific training programs by individual institutions like the Indian Society of Critical Care Medicine, which runs its own programs. But Varsity at Medvasity, we have a master class in critical care uh, program that we run as well. The reason I say this critical care is in boom is the need for trained critical care physicians in the ICUs today is very much there. A lot of the times, both these departments, emergencies and critical care are being manned by resident doctors who are post MBBS doctors. You could be one of them. So the best thing to do would be to pick up a professional program which can add that value or that training and expertise so that it gives you that credibility to, to stay along and continue in that department if you're already working there. So critical care um, and acute medicine. There is a very uh, thin line of difference between these two in the Western world. Acute medicine is not a separate specialty here in India today, but in UK and the United States, they're treated as different. Critical care is different. Acute medicine is different. So um, critical care is another uh, budding specialty that you can watch out for. So I've spoken about two uh, major departments, emergency and uh, critical care. Let me bring your focus to, um, OK, Danish is saying he can't watch. Danish, why don't you try and re-log in? It could be your bandwidth issue. Let me bring your focus back to new age um, specialties or newer uh, departments that are budding, which might have been there probably for the last five, seven years. But uh, I just want to bring the focus back. I'm trying to avoid the major specialties today to give you that interest about what other exciting clinical choices that one can look at. Uh, how all of us know about the pain clinics today in some of the corporate hospitals, but pain management today, pain medicine has become a very, very, very intricate part of every healthcare setup in hospital today. Uh, unfortunately, owing to the increasing number numbers of terminal illnesses today, we have where the major majority of the chunk sits in the uh, uh, cancer uh, patients pain medicine and pain management becomes another exciting avenue where you can explore your opportunities. Again, there are a lot of international and national bodies which do individual training programs in pain medicine. We do not yet have a specialty, I believe. Um, but pain medicine as a training program, probably you can pick up. And if you're somebody, a resident doctor, interested or passionate about working in the oncology or in the terminal uh, illness centers, a lot of hospices today are coming up where they need a pain management expert. So pain medicine is another interesting avenue. Uh, like I said, there are a lot of institutes which offer them. Like we also have a course with the integrity in UK. So think of pain management as well. Why not? Uh, it has um, enough uh, place uh, for uh, doctors to go into today. Uh, so we did emergency medicine, critical care, pain medicine. Um, can we talk about uh, geriatrics? All of us are aware. But do we realize the number of people today who fall into the geriatric population, be it here in India or outside, is so huge and it's going to increase. We are going to have a large and a larger geriatric population to manage across the next couple of decades. Now, when I say geriatric population, the first thing that should ring the bell are chronic illnesses, lifestyle disorders, polypharmacy that they're already on, complications owing to the chronic illnesses, and their lifelong management. Especially with the increased rise of the lifestyle diseases, now we know that every geriatric for anybody above 55 to 60, if they are, uh, you know, they already have a lifestyle disorder or are going into one, they're in a pre-situation or they're already on polypharmacy, all of these situations need a continuous lifelong monitoring for them to have better life expectancy and better quality of life. And they do need a geriatric physician. Today, we have geriatric clinics coming up in a lot of the hospitals, individual geriatric consultations that are uh, being taken up. A lot of our senior physicians uh, who've been uh, internal medicine physicians for quite a long time are now slowly shifting towards geriatry as well, because that's where the chunk of the population is today. So the numbers are huge, the lot of patients, and we need doctors to manage them. Like I said, another um, interesting specialty, uh, which has a place today in every hospital and definitely in the community, it has made its place. So geriatric medicine, have you thought about that? Um, uh, there, there's a great prospect there as well. And uh, again, there are a lot of institutions which do programs. Uh, basic diploma fellowship programs, and then uh, there are master's programs as well. 
uh, we at Medvasity, we work towards understanding the need of the market and the necessity of the courses and trying to build them. So we're coming up with a new program on geriatrics as well. So yeah, geriatric medicine is something that probably you can look at. Um, let me take a couple of questions um, so that it's not just me talking so that I also present what you are also saying. Hi, Manisha. Um, Okay, I'll come to management. Uh, okay, pain management. Ma Manisha is asking how many years of training does pain management require? See, Manisha, be it pain management or geriatrics, uh, these, let, let's just call, the, call them adjunct specialties. You know, they're not a specialty in their own, probably they're developing into. Uh, a lot of them can begin with a basic one year, a fellowship or a diploma sort of a program by any university, wherein the basics of it is laid down so strongly because the the general medicine base is already there with you. And if you're already working and practicing a, uh, as a physician, uh, you are seeing patients, you're into that clinical attachment, then probably a basic program about one year uh, is where it begins with. Like I said, there are programs on pain management, which have a full time uh, two year programs uh, that they're available in the United States. There is a, a two years master's program that's available in the UK. The program that we are doing with e Integrity UK is a short program help with people who are already part of these terminal illness centers and onco units uh, if you're already being a resident there then probably picking up a short program will add value to what you're doing so there are different uh, kinds of programs that you can think of depending on the location or the university that is there yeah yeah so uh okay i have more questions uh, i'll pick up one or two more questions and then we'll go forward um okay since sai swarup is raising a relevant question let me bring uh, the next specialty that I wanted to uh, talk about was primary care physician or family medicine. I said or family medicine is the specialty, but my intent is to talk about the importance of primary care in India today. And for that matter, anywhere in the globe, the focus has not been so much on the primary care where it should have been. We've been focusing on the tertiary sector so much more and maybe uh, the primary care has been ignored. But the primary care physician is the first point of contact for any patient. And uh, there is a comprehensive understanding of family medicine uh, in the Western world. The primary care physician or the family practitioner, or they call it um, a GP uh, in, in the UK, becomes so very important in the life of a patient because that is their first point of contact. He's the person or she's the person who maintains screens, manages the patients, only complications and next level management requests are forwarded to the hospitals for specialists. Uh, unfortunately, um, uh, in India, we're seeing a lot of focus in the reverse direction. It goes through specialists and then boils down. But I think ideally, uh, the ideal scenario would be to bring back the focus on primary care. I think that our government with Niti Aayog and the new uh, policies that are coming up, they're looking back at it. Family medicine has been recognized as a specialty. Now we have in DNB also. But like coming back to Dr. Sai Swarup's question, scope of family medicine in India. Now the word scope um, is hard to answer. When you ask me the scope, are there family medicine clinics in every hospital today? Not really. Uh, a very few, few hospitals have a specific family medicine department because most of it goes into internal med. But there is a very thin line and differentiated approach when you talk about family medicine. We all are seeing health check teams and health check departments today in the hospitals, which are essentially basically screening the patients, which ideally is a part of the role of a family practitioner.